Alrighty, here's our video. Uh, Joe, uh, please tell us a little bit about what we're looking at today. Okay, today we're talking with my cousin, Danielle Lewis, who is an environmental activist and working here in Youngstown. Danielle, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? And that is with the Youngstown City School District. My actual role there is outdoor education and environmental um, sustainability educator. So what I'm really trying to do with the children is create a curriculum mm -hmm. that will enable them to better understand the environment and how science and community all work together to make a healthy environment. So some of the projects that we have going on are school gardens mm. that were started by my supervisor, Pat Lowry, last year. And now we're starting to design native plant gardens. We're also doing pollinator gardens and teaching the kids about bees and butterflies and moths. Yes. We are also doing a greenhouse project at the one school where we're doing aquaponics. And aquaponics, a little bit about that is you're growing fish and using the waste from the fish in a closed system to actually bring nutrients to your plants. Now, the best part about this kind of farming is that you use 90% less water than what you do with traditional farming. Hmm. So what we're trying to do right now is tilapia and leaf lettuce. Mm -hmm. And that will be the first two crops that we do. Very Fantastic. nice. When do you anticipate they'll be ready? Well, the fish, it takes a lot longer. Uh -huh. So we're guessing that will take about nine months for the fish to be completely ready from when we get them as small fish. Uh -huh. But for the leaf lettuce, that can take, with germination, I think it's like 57 to 60 days. So it's a quick turnaround because it grows faster actually in the system. Excellent, excellent, okay. How are kids responding? They like the fact that there's fish involved. Mm -hmm. They've been really excited about they're going to be living animals that they take care of and that they're actually in these big huge tanks. So it kind of reminds them of like an aquarium at like a zoo or something. Mm -hmm. So they're really fascinated on how that's going to work and how the fish are going to live. And they also think it's pretty cool that the plants grow without dirt. Mm -hmm. So Ooh, they're yeah. really into trying to figure out what this is all about. That's really wonderful. Now, you're working, you said, with the Youngstown City School, so you're hitting the whole city. Yes, I am throughout the whole district. Great. So each school, I'm trying to tailor a Pacific plan for. Um, each school has its own Pacific needs. Like one of our schools is for emotional support kids. Mm -hmm. So they're dealing with some problems and working through a hard time in their life. We're actually doing a healing garden there. So we're going to do stuff with more flowering plants, more peaceful, maybe have a water fountain. So whenever they need a moment, they can take it outside. And that way they don't have to leave school for the day. They don't have to threaten their teacher. They can take a break, mm -hmm. come back. So making a more safe environment for those kids to get back on their feet and get back into their schoolwork. Mm -hmm. I mean, a big part of the environmental stuff I'm doing is not just about the environment and their health, um, physically, it's also mentally and emotionally. Mm -hmm. They're all tied together. Yes. That's very mindful. Is there any, um, have you like identified a mindfulness component or is it just kind of there? It's just coming in as we go. Like I started out just thinking, oh, we're going to do native gardens and this and that, which is great ecologically speaking. Mm -hmm. um, but as I speak more with the kids and things like that, they tell me their needs. You know, they want to try new foods in the cafeteria. They want to have a place to go that they feel is safe. So these are some mm -hmm. of the things that we're hearing from the kids and teachers that's needed within the school system. So your curriculum then is flexible enough to change with the needs of the students. Yes. Great. Fantastic. Yeah, it's all about the kids at the end of the day and how are we going to help them to better take the next step in life. Because mm -hmm. we have kids from preschool clear up to their senior year and some that are even taking college classes at YSU. So I have kids all across the board and I really want them to be ha happy, healthy, and ready to go in life. Mm -hmm. And I can, see, I can see the work that you're doing really building in an awareness of um, environmentalism and environmental needs, um, you know, that it's gonna stick with them. Yes. 
Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Sean, do you have any do you have any questions? Yeah, I was just wondering if this uh, if this program is for um, well, it, not for, but is it open for uh, anybody in the city or to come and view this project? We are figuring that out at the moment. Right now, I decided that at the end of our first two growing seasons, we're going to do a little celebration on Earth Day mm -hmm. to recognize the teachers and students that have helped to make this project work. And I decided to make that open to the community. We're hoping to partner with the land bank to maybe do it on one of their vacant lots within the city so it can be open to the community. Because we really want to reach out and touch Youngstown as well and not just keep ourselves closed off. Mm -hmm. So we are working with partners throughout the city so we reach more people. And if uh, something that you're in need of garden space, you can always consider our fair green garden space. We would be, we would welcome you with open arms. Oh, thank very you. Very glad to have you here. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. We're always looking for new opportunities. So. Yeah. Um, can I ask a quick question, Danielle? Yep. What what is the um, program like in the winter time? During the colder months, when you're not able to go outside, what, what kind of things do you have in store for the students? Well, that's a good question. Um, a lot of people don't know, but with like the greenhouse and the aquaponics system, that can go year round. So you keep your water at the right temperature and things, keep the greenhouse at the right temperature, we can keep growing things. Mm -hmm. It won't be as much as what we would get in the summer, but it's still something. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, great, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a couple more minutes yet. Another topic we want to throw up, throw out there. Um, anything that you can think of, Joe? Um, there is, we were talking about GMOs earlier, and we're going to do another discussion about that, but Sean, let's um, pick up on that issue Something now. Something about you? allergy season? Is that oh, what yes. Uh, talk about? Um, I had always been uh, under the impression that uh, hay fever was caused by hay, and it was, <laughs> and it was caused by goldenrod. Mm -hmm. And uh, from a recent visit to the uh, Mother Earth News Fair in Seven Springs, we uh, got a chance to talk to a, another herbalist, a master herbalist who's also a dietitian and a um, um, nutritionist. nutritionist. <laughs> <I'm sorry. coughs> and she um, passed out tea that was made with goldenrod and lemon button <coughs> and uh, people were saying oh but I'm allergic <laughs> mm -hmm. well I found out that it is virtually impossible for anybody to be allergic to goldenrod goldenrod has very little pollen and what pollen it has is sticky so it doesn't fly <laughs> uh -huh. it's a heavier kind of a pollen that uh, stays right. on the stems right and uh, the plants are pollinated by the insects walking over the pollen and oh. distributing it. It doesn't distribute through the air. Now the plant that grows with <coughs> goldenrod is ragweed mm -hmm. and ragweed is the cause of mm -hmm. hay fever <laughs> yeah. and they're right next to each other in most <coughs> places mm -hmm. and this is the season for the pollen to be out from the ragweed. Now goldenrod can actually be made into a tea and has medicinal uses, correct? Right. Very many medicinal uses. It's a urine, uh, urinary tract cleanser. It's a uh, vassal dilator, so it's good for high blood pressure. And it's also good for, of course, for hay fever. It's an antidote for the pollen that comes from the ragweed. And they grow together. That's interesting. <laughs> yes. Looks and, like uh, poison ivy and jewelweed. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they grow together. Poison right, ivy will exactly. give you a rash, but jewelweed, you can put it on the rash and will help you out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Ah, nature taking care of itself, yes. basically. So we're going to round up in the next, uh, oh gosh, we got less than 30 seconds to go. Final thoughts. Well, course. one thing that uh, I teach in all the her herbalist courses and uh, the world we go by is that there's a herb. That's a cure for everything. Mm -hmm. Just many of them that we not have not found out about yet. Yeah, you know. it's because we're too busy killing them with Roundup and all that other <laughs> stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, this is Chris Flack signing out. <laughs> Say goodbye, everybody. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. <laughs>